praise reports anybody want to say anything for the Lord and whoever's praying for all this rain I wish you'd quit praying <laughs> the pond's just about to overflow <laughs> go ahead Thank you, Jesus. God's so good. Amen. All right. Go ahead, Sister Martha. Anybody else? Go ahead. Between a muddy road and a train and the rain, I got here. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. He can work for the post. I was just going to say that, you know, even through all the rain and the puddles and everything, I want to thank God that we still were able to assemble in, in our yes. church. Amen. I mean, you know, because there's a lot of people that can't assemble. For Amen. Them. One reason or another, I mean, at least we live in, you know, a free country, you know. Amen. And I enjoy the rain, so. <laughs> Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. You need to be more excited than that. Yeah, that sounded real exciting. <laughs> Payday is more exciting. <laughs> Amen, brother. I hear you. <laughs> Amen. Go ahead. I'm just thankful that we went from 10 per day back in February. We didn't want to be sick. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's great news. Great news. Amen. Brother Go ahead, brother. I just want to say that I'm sure glad that Brother John showed up tonight. Take your songbook, turn over to page 29. We're going to sing, Oh, I Want to See Him. That's A flat. 
page 29. As I journey through Turn over to page 23. We're going to sing, When He Reached Down His Hand for Me. That is uh, B flat. One, two, three. All right, I want to hear y'all sing loud and proud because I know He's reached down and touched each and every one of you. I picked this song out, and then I had somebody come up to me after church and ask, could I do this song this evening? And I said, I just picked that song out. That's a little weird. But, but she may not be the only one who needs to hear it. So Amen. that is on page 23, B flat. Once my soul.
Lord, I give all my life unto Thee. Guide my feet, hold my hand, grant with Thee I may stand. For You reach down Your hand for me. When He Special? Okay. Whatever that means. So. <laughs> All right, well, I got a couple songs we'll do. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad that you're in the house of the Lord. This is the place we come to worship. It's a place of reverence and respect. It's a place that we are thankful that uh, God has provided for us to be able to corporately gather together for the purpose of worshiping Him. And I'm glad that you were able to make it. What do you have? I'm a Jesus fan. That is isn't. I was driving Amen. I, 
Hey, you know what the good thing is? Is that he's not limiting how many people can attend in the stadium. You can just... <laughs> mm, there is coming a day thrilled tonight. I, uh, I looked back and I saw Miss Sandy was able to be with Amen. us and we're grateful that she is here. Um, uh, happy to have her with us. And then uh, we saw Jimmy and his family with us. Jimmy, thank you all for being here with us tonight. Brother John, we've already mentioned. Um, it's so good to see you guys. Miss Sheila, good to see you all back. And uh, did I miss anybody? Miss Dot. Yes, Miss Dot, good to see you. Of course, I've been seeing her. Anybody else I miss? Bill, it's good to see you again. I know you're not always able to be here, but I'm glad to have you when you are able. Listen, we, uh, as I look around, I said, man, it's a pretty, pretty decent number of folks here tonight, and I'm grateful for you coming and being a part of this. I want you to remember that our privilege to gather together and worship must be preserved, and we preserve it by exercising it. So just don't quit. Let's don't back off. Let's make sure that we're eager about assembling in the house of God, and we never fail to come to the Lord's house to assemble. It's important. Brother Charles, it's good to see you. I didn't expect to see you. I'm glad to have you with us. It's wonderful to be able to be in the house of God, to have a place to go, and to have this wonderful church assembly. This is what we did. I asked Brother Dan to be prepared to bring the message, and tonight... Brother Dan has come, and he's ready. He's prayed up. He's studied up, and he's fired up. Amen. Brother Dan, come on up here and share as God has laid upon your heart. After service tonight, we're going to um, uh, let you know about birthdays and anniversaries through the month of September. God bless you, my brother. You're welcome.
Please join in. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. you may be seated. <laughs> did, I, did I mute it? I had it muted. I was saying the pledge, I really was. <laughs> I brought my, let me show you what, this is what my Bible looks like without the cover. And this is my cover. But uh, I usually keep this at home, but uh, we're in John chapter 6. And so, so I can read it without uh, getting too close to here. John chapter 6. And I don't know if, if Wade was sloughing off or not and he got the title up here or not. Yeah. Following Jesus and being a disciple. Oh, isn't necessarily... Yeah, that's what it is. That's the right. That's the right one. No, don't change it. No, don't change it. Don't change it. John chapter six, verses one through nine, and verse twenty-six. I might jump a few, a few places, but it's okay. It's in English. It's not in that scribble Microsoft Word tablet talk. Yeah. Amen. I just want to say what a blessing it is to be able to teach Sunday school. Yes, it is. Amen. And uh, I get to learn so much, and it's almost like, well, it is on purpose, but it isn't on purpose, if you know what I mean. You get to study because you have a goal in mind. Right. And you want to pass that on to somebody else. You don't get to you know, rake it all in. You want to get it and, and put it out there. So that's a, that's a blessing. So if anybody's interested in teaching Sunday school or even being a substitute, uh, let Pastor know, let Brother Dave know, let me know. Uh, we'll get you in there. That's right. We'll get you in there. We'll give you an outline or something to go by. Right now, I want to read two verses, verse 1 and 2 of chapter 6 in John, and then pray and get started. So, starting with verse 1, chapter 6, the Gospel of John. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles, which he had done on them that were diseased. Let's pray. Lord, our Heavenly Father, I want to proclaim the Word of God and expound on it a little bit, and uh, hopefully we can be helped as a result of this. I pray the Holy Spirit would work. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We're talking about following Jesus isn't necessarily being a disciple. It says in verse 2, because he saw his miracles, which he had done on them that were diseased. But I'm not saying that people that have been healed from a, a disease 
or, or stopped following Jesus, but maybe they started off the wrong way and then they kind of fell off. They stopped following. And, that, and you don't have to raise your hand, but I've seen God do miracles, yep. not just in my family, not, and not necessarily in my church family either, but I hear things happening that, it, that God had to do that. Amen. You have too. Yes. You have too. He's still working. And, and the result of that is so they can see Jesus. That's right. Here's Jesus right here. And it says a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles. That's one reason why they followed him. Right. Now, I don't know what kind of diseases they had. Some of them are probably similar to some of the diseases we have here. But we don't have Jesus walking around among, among us anymore. And if somebody told me that Jesus himself, the one that I trusted in, his personal Savior, was going to be coming to church and going to be here at like uh, 630, I get ready to get down on my knees and worship. Yeah. Amen. You would too. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. And whether he's done a miracle for you or not, or healed somebody, healed you or not, if, if you are one of his disciples, or you might be one of his followers, you would worship him. Yeah. Right. You would worship him. You saw the miracles in verse 1 and 2. Now, there were those, look at verse 46. I'm going to skip everything in between. Is that the right verse? Mm-hmm. Verse 26, I'm sorry. 626. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, like the first group did. Jesus points it out. You didn't follow me because you saw the miracles that I did in healing those that were diseased. But this is why you followed me. Because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. Uh -huh. right. You followed me all across the water and back again because you thought I was special. You thought I was real special. As a matter of fact, you thought I was so special. Look at verse 14 and 15. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth, that prophet, that should come into the world. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king. Wow. That's not why Jesus came. That's, right. That's not why Jesus came. Amen. And he did not want them to get the wrong impression. The last part of that verse, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. Amen. People were following him because they got their belly full. Now, my belly's way bigger than it used to be. Some people said it used to be, what do they call it, a six pack? Twelve pack? I'd be glad to get a one pack out of it now. <laughs> a one pack and there's two right there. But don't hold it for two seconds. You hurt yourself. Right. That's pretty bad. I want, to be, I want to be fed. I want to be fed. Now, what we do here at this church, we used to do. Now, there's kind of put the kibosh on it with the, the pandemic. But we feed people. Right. We feed people. We love to feed people. And they can miss McDonald's or the 
whatever they, wherever they go at lunch, and they know that sometimes we feed them after church, and we announce it, and that's a good thing. But these people heard Jesus, and they wanted to, they wanted to make him king because, man, if he can feed 5,000 plus people at one time, he's going to be our king, and we're going to let him feed us all the time. We're going to eat from the physical table. That's not why we follow Jesus. Come on. That's right, brother. That's not, we, well, we, that's not why we follow Jesus. Amen. That's not why we're a disciple of Jesus. Because of what he can do for us physically. Right. Come on. Uh, now, while Jesus was here, in the middle of teaching these crowds, one crowd was following him because of the healing of the diseases, and another crowd, maybe the, some of the same ones, following him because they, they got their belly full. Now, here's the, the test inside the test with Jesus with his disciples. Uh, this is what I did not give Wade. <laughs> He'd have wanted me to put an outline and all this kind of stuff. and you know, uh, it's, it's in the same chapter. <laughs> look, at, look at after verse 2 it says, they saw his miracles which he did on them that were diseased. Then verse 3, starting with verse 3, Jesus went up into a mountain and there he sat with his disciples and the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, one of his disciples that he had just recently called, he lived in the same town as Andrew and Peter, hey, Philip, you see in your Bible it says red letters, when shall we buy bread that these may eat? Knowing good and well, but that's not what he was going to do. Right. You know the end of the story. <laughs> yeah. Knowing they didn't have all it would take to feed over 5,000 people. And it says here in verse 6, This he said to prove him, or test him, for he himself knew that what he would do. Sure he did. I don't know if I needed verse 6 in there to tell me that Jesus would, knew what he was going to do anyway. Right. <laughs> Uh, verse 7, then Philip speaks up. Something special about Philip. Answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them. Right. We'll stop right there. Now, we know when Jesus called all of his disciples, it's kind of generally understood that Judas Iscariot was the one that carried the money. But Judas was not called yet. Right. So maybe it was Philip's job to take care of the money. That's why he pipes up and says, hey, we got 200 penny worth of bread of money. Every one of them take a little, but then one of his disciples, Andrew, the loud mouse brother, I mean Peter's brother, <laughs> you get that? <laughs> Andrew, you know the first thing he did when he, when he found Jesus, he went and told his brother Peter. Amen. That's exciting. Yes, That's sir. exciting. Andrew's so excited about it. I can't believe this. He found the Messiah. Amen. I'm going to tell Peter. I, I don't know how I'm excited so much, but I know Peter can get excited. You have a brother like that? Or do you know a brother like that? You know he can get so excited? Whoa, I'm telling him. I'm going to tell him, and we're going to get this thing going. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brothers, said unto him, I don't know Jesus, but there's a lad here which had five barley loaves and two small fishes. 
then this is, the, this, is the, this is what you want to tell Jesus all the time. But what are they among so many? How about your need for a, a healing or a prayer request, and you say, that's too big for you, isn't it, God? That's too much for you to handle? I don't think you can do that. Maybe I better wait it out. I think that's too much. Am I asking too much? Let me ask you this. When your baby, the age that they are back here, making all the noise and everything, when they come over to mama, put their hands up, first thing mama does, put her hands down and pick that baby up. That's what we all do with, with, with God. I don't know what to do, God. I don't know what to do. And feel him, feel him, fill you. Feel him, fill you. With whatever it is you need. With grace for another day. Whatever it is. I can't answer your prayer. Sometimes, I wish I could answer some people's prayer, but like a, there's a movie we watch on, uh, what is that thing called? Television. <laughs> okay. And it was about uh, a secret Santa kind of thing. Yes, I know it's September. It's only September. Okay, it's only September. But I watched it anyway. Well, this person had kind of fallen off the face of the map. He was uh, a businessman, and what he thought his job was to do is bless everybody he thought that needed a blessing. What a nice thought. What a nice thought. A real feel-good, happy movie. It reminded me of this passage that we're talking about. It's, they were seeing the miracles and trying to help out. Or experiencing food when you don't have food. Mm -hmm. And not telling them, you know, what can really comfort your soul. That's what I thought about when I was watching this movie. You know, the Hollywood version of being a blessing to others. That's just my two cents. You can pay three cents for it, but it's a limited time. And your answer is Jesus in verse 8 and 9. He says, there is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. And then the question, are, what are they among so many? So many people. You know, our God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing our God cannot do. You know, you don't just sing it in junior church. And when you're on your knees, I like those little things to kind of stir me up. Amen. I'm a child of the king. Thank you. My God spoke this world into existence. He didn't have to think about it, didn't have to have graphs and charts and... That's right. That's right. That's my Jesus. That's my... God, will you help me? God, will you help me? What are they among so many? Those five loaves and two fishes that you got. What is that among, with the problems you got? Yeah. That's what you're saying to yourself. And it's why you're beating yourself up because you can't pray the right prayer or say the right thing. Mm -hmm. That ain't the right way. Yeah. That's the right thing. Just sing the song. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. That's right. If he wants to.
I'm going to ask where you come in. I ask where you come in. This test for Philip. And then Andrew answers. This is the thing. When God is moving. And we see here Jesus in chapter 6. Jesus is they're wanting to make him king. He's feeding hundreds and thousands of people. And at the beginning they followed him over the Sea of Galilee because they saw the miracles he did on people. There's so much going on in life. Even this the small amount of people we have here, there's so much going on with our our church family. Amen. That's right. There's so much going on. Mm-hmm. But Jesus says to just picks out one yeah. person, deals with him. Somebody else answers because this man can't answer that question. You think there's a lot of confusion there. Well, sometimes that's how God works. Amen. Sometimes that's how God works. Amen. Because your God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing your God cannot do. That's right. I don't, I don't know if that's in the Bible or not, but it should be. That little song. Yeah. It's so big. Uh, to finish up here, uh, go to Isaiah 55. This will be the last couple of verses. Isaiah 55. Now, this is kind of a, a typical, topical message instead of an expositional message. Okay, topical I mean topics. Okay, topics. This is, when I first read this verse, I'm thinking, when I was a kid, and if I knew this verse, I would have claimed this. And I may, you know, I wasn't even a Christian, but we didn't have no money. Maybe you've been there, or maybe that's the way you were raised. Ho, oh, everyone that is that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye buy and drink. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. There is a fountain. Amen. There is a fountain. And you've been granted permission to dip in that fountain anytime you want to. Because you are a child of the king. You are. This. Let it fill you up. Let it fill you up. The fact that you are not just who you used to be. Amen. That doesn't make you. That doesn't make you what you used to be. What you are now and where you're going. Amen. I got a new direction. I want us to bow our heads and close our eyes right now. I don't know about you, but I love John chapter 6 and 7 and 8 and so on. Inside, inside of yourself, pretend that you're lifting your hands up and saying, God, I want more of you. I want to live for you more. You want that. Yeah. You desire that. Yes. Tell him. 
Yes. Tell him. He wants to hear from you. Thank you, Lord. And then watch him do something for you in your life. We're going to pray now. Pastor, you come ahead. Lord, thank you for this time. Thank you for John chapter 6. Thank you for Jesus taking the time to heal people from disease and to feed people and to love on his disciples the way he did in this John chapter 6, these few verses. I pray your blessing on everyone here and the families represented. Yes. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, my brother. Amen. Amen. To follow the Lord is one of the greatest privileges that we have. As Brother Dan brought out, some followed for various reasons. And Jesus then sorted them out whenever he said, you have to eat my flesh and drink my blood to have any part to do with me. And we found out that I, the thing I think I want to share with you is that the following him sometimes is a process and not just a one-time decision. Amen. Amen. It's something you have to go through. You may start out, as we talked about this morning, in simple obedience before the faith ever comes. You may, you may be thinking, Brother Buddy, I tried going to church, and I just don't feel it. It's not, it's not connecting with me. Keep going. Amen. Just keep going. Sometimes the feelings come later. Amen. Sometimes the faith will be birthed out of your obedience. Don't stop. Just obey and do what you know is right to do. I uh, think especially uh, of, of Jimmy and his family as they're here tonight, and I know that he, he may be a little frustrated the babies are not behaving as he would like to see them do so. And, and you may think, Jimmy, that this is a, an, an issue that might keep you from coming. I would say to you, keep coming. Amen. Jesus said, uh, that not suffer the little children. That's exactly right. Don't, don't keep the kids from coming in. I remember when Jesus was very tired one time, and the uh, disciples said, we're not, letting you, we're not letting you come in. We're not letting you bring your babies in so they can sit on his knee and get a little love. And that's right. He said, y'all don't know what you're doing. He said, he said, it's better for one of you to be thrown out in the middle of the sea with a big stone around your neck. Yes, sir than it is for you to offend one of these little ones. And those babies right there, their lives matter. Amen. Yeah, and the love that we show them will make a big difference. I want to thank you all for being with us tonight. Let me go over the birthdays and anniversaries, and I'm going to dismiss you in prayer in just a moment. For the month of September, birthdays uh, on the 7th of September, Miss Ruthie Goodrow. On the 9th, Brother David Chase. On the 10th, Miss Angie Shillette. On the 11th, Miss Sandra Capps, even though she moved all the way to Tennessee. Uh, on the 12th, Miss Frances Madden. Um, also, Brother Doug Turberville had his birthday. That was uh, yesterday, actually. And then on the 18th is Brother Andrew Bell. 23rd, Brother David Capstraw. And then on the 24th, Miss Kimberly Gilliard. And uh, so we're looking forward to celebrating that with you. Did I miss anybody's birthday this month? Okay. Then the anniversaries for this month that we'll be celebrating is uh, on the 18th of September uh, is Mr. and Mrs. Danny Bennett. And on the 27th, we've got two of them. I don't know how these guys worked it out. Uh, but Mr. and Mrs. Daniel Herrett and Mr. and Mrs. Mark Couch celebrate their anniversaries on the same day. Uh, amen? That's pretty good. I think you all usually get together even, do you not? That's... That's pretty good. And then, um, of course, Brother, Brother Scooter and Miss Barber celebrate theirs on the 28th. Did I miss any anniversaries for the month of September? Uh, I know we usually have cake and coffee. We don't have that, so we just toast you with an air toast, yeah. Elbow bump. The elbow bump. <laughs> oh, my goodness. 
So um, glad to have you tonight. Would you stand with us? We'll dismiss you in a word of prayer. And um, thank you all for being here. Listen, the roads are wet. Be careful on your way home. It's still light enough. You can see good. That's a, that's a great thing. Be careful on your way home. And Lord willing, we'll see you again uh, come Wednesday night, uh, in, if not before. Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the glorious, precious gift of your word. I want to thank you tonight for what Brother Dan brought us, how he reminded us about following Jesus, and it's imperative that we do that. Lord, I I know that may, we may start it out for a different reason, but I pray, God, that we just don't quit. I pray we keep on coming until it does finally sink in and change our hearts and our minds. Um, I, I believe with all of my heart that's why we're taught to train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old he will not depart from it. I believe we have to implant those habits and those, um, those um, abilities into our children, into our families, so that they will follow it when they grow older. I ask now, Lord, for a special blessing upon us this week. Keep your hand on us. We thank you for all the things that you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you guys. Thank you for being here. Pastor Buddy here. Thank you for joining us today for our worship service. It is my prayer that you have heard from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through something that was sung or preached or said. If God has touched you, then I would urge you that you surrender to him today without delay. If you've made a decision to trust Christ as your personal Savior, or maybe you have chosen to surrender to him more fully in his Lordship, then I would urge you to let us know by giving us a call at 904 924-8240 or you can email me at pastor p-a-s-t-o-r at l-r-b-c-j-a-x dot org until next time may God be richly blessing you